All right, so uh, today uh, we are going to demonstrate the impact of cyber system on, uh, on uh, power system monitoring using a real-time test bed that we developed at Washington State University. So there are several contributors to uh, uh, this uh, uh, test bed development, uh, including uh, Ren Liu, uh, PhD student, uh, Simon, who is also a PhD student, uh, uh, Carl Hauser, a faculty, and then uh, Hugh Jong Lee, uh, and uh, Sagata Biswas, and then uh, Tushara Gual. So our objective here is uh, basically to demonstrate the interdependency of cyber and power grid and uh, also using the hardware in the loop for uh, in the long term so that we can we can study the impact for like remediation scheme and for wide area control uh, the one uniqueness of our test bed is it's uh, it's a, it's integrated in hardware in the loop so it has a hardware devices and software devices it's in real time and it is end to end system and what do we mean by end to end system is that it models from the physical system to uh, sensors to communication and then uh, finally to the end system which is one of the application at at the control center another uh, objective here that we have in long term is to develop IEEE standard test cases for cyber power system which is not available right now and it will be very useful for uh, researchers so we already have a IEEE physical system standard and uh, we can add a cyber part on top of that to make a IEEE standard cyber power system test, test cases so our approach to accomplish this is basically model all the layers of a cyber power system so what you see here is uh, uh, basically a power system layer that's being modeled in RTDS uh, using a real-time digital simulator. The second layer, which is the sensor layer and controller layer at the, at the substation. So those are the phasor measurement unit and PDC and, and something like automation controller. The third layer is our communication layer, which is network model in network simulator three and on top of that we have application layer and in in uh, in our demo today is specific application is voltage stability uh, uh, based on single phasor data all right so once you put all this thing together this is how our our uh, integrated test bed look like so you have a rtds all the way here and there are several interfaces you see here with the uh, uh, real hardware pmus and pdcs and then database application then NS3 running here. So one thing I would like to mention here is that it has actual hardware uh, which is being used in the substation in, in exactly like a, a real field industry. So, and they have the same failure rate as, uh, as actual system. All right, so a little bit more about uh, test bed for ITDS and sensors and also communication. So we do have several PMUs from different vendors, as you see, mostly SEL, then also GE, LSTOM, and ERL phase. And substation PDC that we are using to feed the data from these PMU are SEL PDC. And then, of course, our communication is Network Simulator 3. So moving on to application side, so once we uh, send the data from SCL PDC, it will be collected at Open PDC at the control center, and then from Open PDC, our application, which is old stability here, uh, will collect the data and and monitor the system in terms of index, which is basically between zero and one. Zero is good, while one is not good, and and approaching towards one means uh, old stability. All right, so. Uh, now uh, the test case we have uh, t uh, IEEE 14 bus system which is the standard uh, IEEE system we, are, we keep, kept it small so that we can model the PMU at all the buses either using hardware PMU or, or software, PD, software PMU. So you see 14 buses here which we divide into the 10 subsystem which are basically a substation and then each substation will have a, a PMU and PDC. Now, on top of that, we put the communication layer, 
So the communication network topology ex exactly matches with power system network. And then each substation is, is, is something like a network uh, uh, node in a communication. So finally, what we have is a two-layer model. Now we'll uh, start with the actual demo. So what you see here is uh, we talked about IEEE 14 bus system. And IEEE 14 bus system is modeled in RSCAD. So you see a, a test case draft file. You don't see a lot of component here because there are too many to see, and it's uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in low resolution mode. Now we'll switch it to a real time uh, simulation. So what you see here, again in RS RTDS, is uh, that voltage is constant, and that's what it should be. If there's no disturbance in the system, you should see the constant voltage. All right. So so we talked about physical system. Now if it's up and running, you'll see the PMU data getting to the substation PDC. So you see that uh, uh, that all the PDC, which is SCL PDC at, at the substation, are receiving the data and operating in normal mode. From here, the data will go through to NS3. So we'll initialize our NS3. And uh, you'll see that all the data is being transferred from substation PDC to a, a control center. So this has been initialized, and you see that number changing those sort of the data packets. And those are specifically chosen to show only those nodes which we want to show, because that's where, the, uh, that's where we will model the outage or denial of service attack. So as you see that, uh, all this are turning away from red to green, which means that now it's all up and running. and uh, Open PDC is able to get the data from all the PMU. Now we switch to the application side at the control center. So you see IEEE 14 bus system network here, which is not exactly up to the in 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 a, in terms of location the buses. It shows the rough uh, network, and now you will see the real time run of voltage stability analysis index. So you, on the top, you see voltage magnitude, then angle, real power, reactive power. And this is the most interesting, which is basically voltage stability analysis index. So we are going to watch that how this changes if we make changes in the load. Okay. So we will we'll run the script file. This will change the load from here. You see that uh, voltage is changing here. Right, and you see that being reflected here. Also, so uh, we set the threshold to 0 0.8, and as soon as you do it to 0 0.8, it will turn red. And you see that old stability, which started at one bus, will spread around the system, and that's what you see here happening. So that was our uh, normal case, and now you see that. Uh, voltage has been decreased to a uh, certain value. So what we will do now is that we will demonstrate the uh, system with, with the communication outage and with the, with the denial of service attack. So, so, if you, uh, if, so what we will do is that we will still increase the load at bus 14. And then we'll do the communication line outage between node 0 and node 4. And then finally, a denial of service attack at node 9. So now we'll reinitialize our communication to model the communication line outage and denial of service attack. So you see that uh, uh, the traffic, data traffic on these two nodes. And then after some time, it will node 4 to node 0 will uh, basically show the zero traffic data transfer. And you will repeat the same thing with the load change. So that's going to happen very soon here. And then you see that uh, 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 the load being changed. That happens at 35. Okay, mm -hmm. So you see the load is being changed here. Also, the node 4, node 0 is becoming 0. So communication line outage happened. 
our normal case is running on the top and you should notice the difference between this one and this one. So you see the changes are going on in the application in the normal mode while here it is not it will not change as much as normal case because of the denial service attack. So you see this is become red while here it is not. So what happening is that with the denial of service attack system operator is not going to see the changes and then they, s they s specifically see sudden changes and they do not have time to act on that or to take a proper control action. Right. So, what we demonstrate today is basically uh, uh, only the effect on power system monitoring. Of course, uh, uh, we, we can take this what we have now to make it and demonstrate the real time control action and how the this will affect the control action something like a remedial action scheme in a closed loop right so uh, other than this application we have also demonstrated uh, using the same closed loop uh, uh, ability for device testing although today it was open loop uh, uh, demonstration but uh, uh, because we don't have a control action model but the closed loop ability uh, is is with the hardware is already existing so we can do the testing like for pmu devices or other application we can also uh, uh, model cyber power attack something like aurora attack which we demonstrated using our test case without any damage to expensive equipment we have also modeled microgrid reconfiguration using a real hardware uh, devices in the loop. Another thing we have done that we have combined the error attack kind of attack with the cyber vulnerability and power vulnerability indices to, to model a coordinated cyber power attack on the system and see that how we can defend our system from that. And finally, we are also doing a cyber power training simulator uh, with one of the TCPG alum. So, to conclude here, we have modeled the communication and uh, power system in real time with four different layers. We have uh, demonstrated that uh, communication outages or, or cyber layer basically affect the power system monitoring. And we have demonstrated uh, in general that we, what we found that communication is not generally a bottleneck if it is a normal condition of course if it is uh, uh, compromised then it, it is a problem for the cyber system and in future what we want to do is uh, basically take what we have now to for a closed loop control and and model the how the communication delays or communication system attack will affect the real time control and, and stability of real time control. We also want to replace the NS3 with the grid stat, which is another uh, communication modeling tool with uh, flexible power delivery system. And we want to analyze for additional uh, wide area system application and then also model uh, additional attack vector to see the impact on system. And with that, I would like to acknowledge the support from our uh, funding agency. Uh, Department of Energy and uh, uh, De Department of Homeland Security funding for the TCPG, NSF and also uh, DOE for funding my other work uh, which is going on at SG Drill for uh, development of this test bed and then also all those all the vendors who has provided the uh, hardware and software tool to to develop this test bed.